love the concept of internet friends. I've always felt more comfortable talking to people through a computer rather than face to face. Maybe it's just because I'm a social reject, but to me it's a lot less pressure when you have more time to think about what you want to say and when your appearance, or the impression about you that your appearance might give off, isn't at all a factor in meeting new people. You're also just a lot more likely to run into people with similar interests as you online rather than in real life. In real life, you're thrown into a random school with a random set of people, and for the first 18 years or so of your life, these are the people that you'll be interacting with the most because you're spending several hours of every weekday in a building with them in it. But to narrow your chances of finding someone you connect with in real life even further, you're not even going to talk to a lot of these people, because they might not be one of the few people randomized into your classes. The chances that someone in your school happens to share a lot of interest with you is low enough as it is, and the chances that you guys will meet and be able to talk for long enough to learn about each other is even slimmer. You might even be tempted to lie about your interests or tolerate talking to people that you don't connect with that much just to have friends in your classes. On the internet, this is an entirely different story, because right off the bat, you'll probably share interests with them. You're both playing the same video game or on the same forum or on the same website, so both of you share that interest, and you can display your interest to people right off the bat by customizing your profile, and you have as much time as you could possibly need to get to know these people enough to connect with them personally. I love those aspects of making online friends. I think a lot of people are discouraged from making online friends because of the safety risks, and parents don't want to allow their children to make internet friends a lot of the time for the same reasons. I'm not going to deny that these risks are present. I've experienced them firsthand before because I got into social media at way too early of an age, but I think as long as you wait until a proper age, you educate yourself about the warning signs of a person you shouldn't talk to, and you are prepared to maintain communication with a parent or adult in case something doesn't feel right to you, the chances of those things happening decrease significantly. I think it's understandable that parents may want to discourage their kids from something that could be potentially dangerous, but doing so might also deprive them from the possibility of making lifelong friends and improving their mental health in the future because they have the support of said friends. You're taking the possibility of those experiences away from them, and this could be detrimental, especially if they have a history of having trouble making friends in real life. I've learned a lot about different kinds of people and the world through my internet friends in the past. My internet friends have introduced me to new hobbies that shaped my character and that I'm still interested in today. The first social media, if you can even call it that, that I used to make online friends was a small coding website called Scratch. I found it through my library tech class in elementary school. Scratch allows you to share your work with other people on the website, it allows you to like or favorite projects, and you can follow people, mimicking that of a traditional social media. Even though it was originally intended for kids to learn how to code, there is a large amount of artists that use the website to share their work. The difference between Scratch and any other social media, however, is that Scratch is very kid-friendly and allows people under the age of 13 to use it. Because of this, a huge amount of people on Scratch are younger kids. The moderation feature is super strict, deleting comments containing swear words, taking down projects that have too much violence, deleting comments that link to other social medias, and even permanently banning users for these offenses. I met a lot of kids my age here and connected with them about book series I liked or hobbies we shared. The idea that I could meet with any variety of people, including people who lived in different countries with completely different lifestyles, was incredible to me. I liked to do warrior cat world plays on Scratch, wholesome ones that is, and make a horrible attempt at making artwork and animation. Once I was a few years older, I started to make friends on the multiplayer Minecraft server Hypixel. Hypixel has a feature called housing, where you were given a plot of land and you could essentially build whatever you liked. You could also title your house whatever you liked and add it to a public list of houses that anyone can join. I would go through page after page trying to find warrior cat roleplays and join those, or I would make ones of my own. They were kind of rare here because it wasn't as widely known as other fandoms and the amount of people using housing on Hypixel Minecraft to do warrior cat roleplays was kind of slim, so sometimes I'd be looking for ages, and it was so so unlikely for a warrior cat housing to even be that active. Even though Hypixel Minecraft was intended at older audiences than I think Scratch was, I actually mostly found people around my age, which was like 12 at the time, and only sparingly found older people. After I made a few friends here, my mom bought me a Minecraft realm, which was basically just an overpriced Minecraft world that you could do whatever you wanted to on and add people to a whitelist so you could play with your friends there. Unlike those free server hosting websites, it was free of lag and it was permanently up, so people on the whitelist could join at any time. I added all my Hypixel friends to the whitelist and we would build structures to do our little furry roleplays in there. We actually made some pretty impressive stuff. I had a friend named Scarlet, I actually still have her added on Discord, who was a phenomenal builder, and she found a way to make my ideas a reality, and I loved roleplaying with her and my other friends in these builds. We built Warrior Cat Clan roleplays, but also other roleplays too if we didn't feel like Warrior Cats or I was on with a friend who didn't know anything about Warrior Cats. We built 
up this whole Hogwarts from Harry Potter and I cannot express to you how fucking amazing that shit was. There were several courtyards and pretty much every class that was mentioned in the books. We even had a Quidditch pitch, Hagrid's hut, a chamber of secrets, and I even hand wrote the books in the library to be canon to the story. We collectively spent so much time on that. The funny thing about the realm was even though there was no way to leave messages for people and I didn't have a way to contact them outside of Minecraft at all, it was like surprisingly active during daylight hours. You could log in at any point and there was a good chance that someone would be there even though there were like less than 10 people whitelisted. We were chronically online on that and so into it. I really miss it but eventually my dad noticed the subscription because I uh, you know, conveniently forgot to remind them about it and cancelled it. <laughs> it's fine though because around that time was when I started to lose interest in the realm anyway. After that I moved on to actual social medias. Yay! Never mind, I, uh, I went back to scratch for a bit. And then I moved on to actual social medias. The day before my 13th birthday, I made a YouTube channel. You uh, might be familiar with this one. I was super excited and I thought it'd take me an entire day to set up for some reason. I wanted to expand my audience because the possibilities on Scratch are just kind of limited because at the end of the day, it's a pretty small website and you can only go so far. YouTube felt like it had more opportunities. At around a similar time, I made a Toy House account, a Discord account, and a DeviantArt account. I started making a lot more online friends this way and I still do to this day. Though honestly, even though I interact with a lot more people than I used to, I would say my online friend circle is pretty small, much smaller than it used to be. It's so much harder to be openly friendly and meet new people when there are new factors involved, like social awareness or this weird feeling that I need to be professional all the time. I would 100% say that I truly believe internet friends are just as real as friends you meet in person. There is nothing about communication being through a computer that makes your connection with someone any less real. I have some friends here that I've known for years and have established genuine trust with. I talk to them really frequently and we know a considerable amount about each other. These are people who have seen me through my highs and lows, have watched me grow up over the years, and have stayed there for me for so long. Honestly, thinking about them genuinely makes me feel emotional and I think it's incredibly difficult to explain this feeling to someone who has never had an internet friend before or doesn't get that type of relationship. Even if I don't maintain contact anymore with a lot of internet friends that I've had in the past, either because I physically just lost the ability to connect with them or because we went our separate ways at some point, I still think that they contributed to who I am as a person a lot and I genuinely can't imagine what my life would look like right now if I'd never met a lot of these people. Anyways, I've gone on quite the long tangent now, so I'm gonna try and wrap up here. Thanks for listening to me ramble about this, and feel free to share your own stories or thoughts below because, as always, I love to hear them. I had an idea for next week's video where I need submissions from you, so keep on the lookout for an update about this. There will be one in a YouTube community post, in my Discord server, and on Toy House, so just keep an eye out because the more submissions I get, the more entertaining the video can be. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.